Hello there. This is Squiggly Sensual Voice, here today with another thrilling installment of Skugs. But you may know it as Skullgirl's Guides. Today's episode is Offense. We'll be discussing block strings, mix-ups, resets, and knockdowns. So without further ado, let's get started. But first, a little word from our sponsors. We have sponsors? Are you tired of getting mixed by your friends? Scared to ask people in casual NA for games? Too nervous to hit your new combo mid-match? Well, have I got the place for you. Join the Hunter's Hustle Discord and participate in the Hunter's Hustle, a weekly tournament for beginners ran by the legendary Hunter Half Hands, a man with half the hands but double the heart. Hunter's Hustle is a weekly for beginners that's on every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Hunter's Hustle works on everything. Use it for gardening tile walls, and even fix your car with it. Hunter's Hustle is so strong, it can even pull this entire truck by itself. Play it in your living room, in the library, or even at work. Just don't play it on Wi-Fi. Ha ha ha. Now my job is way less soul crushing. Hunter's Hustle is a great place for noobs, scrubs, casuals, and amateurs alike. Click now and join this server for absolutely zero dollars. We'll even cover shipping and handling. But wait, there's more! Act now, and you'll be able to enter the bi-weekly solo tournament Honest Skullgirls for no extra charge! Tired of brass, beam, and any DP assist? Dying to raw tags? Well, play Skullgirls how it's meant to be played. One-on-one, -on -one, mono a mono, girl on girl, all for the low, low price of nothing. We're practically giving it away. Remember, if you want to tussle, then join Hunter's Hustle. And if you want to play some honest Skullgirls, then you better pet some rabid squirrels. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Just click now. Frame data detected. Ah, the frame data alarm's going off. So for this episode of Skugs, we're going to be talking a little bit about frame data, which is basically the magic that makes fighting games work. Uh, I primarily cater these videos to people who have played other fighting games but not Skullgirls. But if you are new to fighting games as a whole, then fear not. I will link a timestamp to a Core A gaming video in the description that will quickly explain frame data. But it's an important concept that you need to have an understanding of to grasp the offense in this game. So in Skullgirls, there are four different types of offensive situations you'll find yourself in. Block string offense, resets, knockdowns, and incomings. The offensive situation in this game can be pretty oppressive, so it's important that when it's your turn to pressure, you take full advantage of it. But just because the offense is strong doesn't mean people can't defend themselves from it. Your opponent can and will take advantage of sloppy and predictable offense, so it's important to mix things up. To start, let's talk about block string offense. Block strings in Skullgirls are conducted a little differently compared to other games of its ilk. The opponent has a plethora of defensive mechanics, most notably push block guard cancel, as well as character specific responses you always have to look out for. In this game, while the attacker typically has a large amount of advantage when taking their turn, the defender is still given enough by the system to take gambles on your pressure. And since 99% of these wacky hits in this game lead into combos, and combos lead into resets, that means your opponent mashing one time can lead to you losing the game. That's why it's a good idea to structure your offense properly. The first thing you should know about block strings in this game is that characters have access to frame advantage on block fairly easily. There are assists of course, but as a general rule of thumb, most light normals are plus on block, and every character has at least one medium normal that's safe. Using Robo as an example, all her light buttons are either zero or plus, and most of her mediums are at least safe. And Robo pressure kinda sucks. When I block Robo, I am literally never scared ever, and she has like two mix-ups. But that goes to show how strong pressure is in general. However, once you get to heavy normals, that's when things start to become heavily disadvantaged. This, as well as the aforementioned push block guard cancel, are the main reasons why you want to keep your strings short. Some common ways to pressure in this game is something like a light into a medium as a simple hit confirm string, or doing a couple jabs to establish pressure. Once you establish your pressure and you know they won't mash, you can use your plus frames to do what you want. Go for a mix-up, 
call an assist, stagger pressure, run away like a coward, blocks because big bands stay mashing, anything, bro. The main thing to keep in mind is that you're at advantage, so you get to do something with relative safety and the knowledge that your opponent has to take a pretty big risk to get out. This plus frames into stuff is the basis for pretty much all high level pressure in this game, and is something you should use as a baseline when building your offense. The last thing I want to cover is a simple but effective universal mix-up that everyone can do and it works on everyone, being low throw. In this game, when you want to tech a throw, you have to hold back or forward to do it, meaning you can't block low and throw at the same time. If you try, you'll get a crouching normal and the throw tech window will be completely skipped. This means going low or throwing someone becomes a true 50-50 mix-up that is unreactable. Using this in conjunction with plus frame lows becomes a very simple yet effective mix-up and for characters like Double, it's the primary way they open people up solo. If you're having trouble opening people up, this mix-up is your old reliable you can always fall back on. Up next, let's talk about the knockdown system in this game. Knockdowns in this game are nothing to write home about. The main two you will be encountering will be soft downs and hard downs. Soft downs are probably the most common, usually happening after a dropped combo. You just land on the ground and are able to choose between teching forwards or backwards, done by inputting a button in a direction, or waking up normally in place by doing nothing. When you get put in this situation, I recommend trying to tech away if possible, because savvy players will be prepared for your tech in. Next are hard knockdowns, which are very reminiscent of knockdowns from other games. You get knocked down and get up slowly at a fixed timing. Hard knockdowns aren't too common. The main ones that come to mind off the top of my head are Big Band after H Brass, Misfortune after level 1, and Beowulf after literally any combo. These downs are much more terrifying since you better expect some devious setup from the depths of Hades when you wake up. Honestly, knockdowns in this game aren't too common, and they're not too prevalent, but you should still understand them so you can apply mix-up and pressure on people's wake-up. Finally, we're going to talk about incoming. Incoming happens when one character dies on a team and another character is coming in. Or incoming. Get it? There's a good chunk of time before the incoming actually happens, and you or your opponent gets a chance to set up a variety of things. Swap characters, build resources, and primarily mix up your opponent. Incoming mix-ups aren't that strong mid-screen, but they get much, much stronger when you're close to the corner. Because you come in completely actionable, there's a lot of counterplay to the various incoming situations, especially if you're fighting a character solo. However, if someone has assists available and has structured their incomings well, you'll most likely have to at least block one mix-up before you can play the game again. This is, of course, different per character and per situation, so experiment with what options your character has on incoming. Finally, we're going to talk about resets. Is what I would say, but I'm going to put resets in a separate video, probably with some clickbaity title and thumbnail. Uh, I feel like... New players get destroyed by this a lot, so I want to get the info out there to the people that need it without being muddled by the rest of this offensive guide. So, uh, up next, we will have the long-awaited reset tutorial. Thank you again for coming with me on another Skugs adventure, having a grand old time over here. Um, hopefully it's out by the end of the month if we're lucky. I mean, yeah. Uh, anyway, I'll see y'all later.